Hello guys, uh, welcome. This is Pravin Kumar from Kites Construction Academy. So as you know that the, our academy is into providing practical training to the students of civil engineering who are uh, who are just graduated from the their uh, engineering or who are working professionals. Okay. So in previous sessions uh, we have discussed about the construction sequences and also we have discussed about uh, important points to be considered for uh, while doing the marking activity. In today's sessions, I'll be discussing about the marking activity by manual process. Okay. So just we'll uh, try to uh, recall the things which we have discussed in the previous classes. See here, uh, we discussed a uh, construction sequences, right? So the construction sequences uh, involves marking, earthwork, anti termite treatment, foundation activity, formwork activity, scaffolding activity, reinforcement activity, concreting, masonry plastering, painting, tiling, marble and granite work, woodwork, metal work, aluminium fixtures, waterproofing work, electrical work, plumbing work, VDF work, then structural glazing and ACP work, gypsum fall ceilings and partition walls, road works and housekeeping. The one which I have not mentioned is your snag list. So that also I'll be discussing in the later sessions. Okay. So now uh, we have discussed uh, like uh, we have uh, uh, studied about the marking activity and like definition of the marking okay and the important points that are involved in marking that also we have discussed like important points like punchman benchmark temporary benchmark reduced level base level uh, sorry baselines setbacks gfc drawings pcc grid line string line marking pillars setting out of drawings and building bylaws okay so these are points we have discussed so as you see uh, as you're noticing here See here, this is uh, this is our theodolite. Then we have uh, auto level, and uh, this is your total station. So these are the instruments which are used in setting out of the drawings. Okay, so these are called as civil surveying instruments. So when you are using the auto level, so the basically the auto level is used to check the elevations and also to check the level of your farm work, the level of the excavations done. Okay, for those purpose we will be using the auto level and total station is uh, like uh, it will be used for uh, all the purposes like setting out of the drawing and uh, for elevation purpose and angles okay and this is an electronic based instrument so that will be used for the marking activity okay so before understanding the marking activity let's see the drawing which will be given for your ex uh, marking of columns and footing okay so as we have discussed about the grid lines if you see here one two three four five so these are the grid lines okay so then the uh, these are the vertical grid lines and these are the horizontal grid lines so whenever this vertical and horizontal grid line intersect no so that will be the point of your uh, that is a central point center point or a point which will be used to mark the footing so if you see here F1 represents a footing and C represents column and they have given F1, C1. F1 means whenever F1 is there, your size of the footing will be same and F2 is the size of the footing will be different from your F1. That's why they have designated as F1, F2. This is called as grouping of your footings and grouping of your columns. Okay. So this is our grid line drawing. So this is the drawing which has to be transferred onto the ground. So now we will be discussing about that. So before that, I'll show you one more drawing. So this is this is the detailed drawing. If you see here, all the footing details will be given. If you see here, the footing details are given here. F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. So this is the detail. Means length, width and the depth. Depth is depth of the concrete. It's not the depth of the excavation. It is depth of the concrete. Depth of the excavation will be given in this drawing. Okay. So if you see here, typical cross section. In the typical cross section drawing, they have mentioned the depth of the footing. Got it? Okay. Then, so depth of the footing is given here. So, and also see here column sizes. So the, in this, in the structural drawing, they have given the grouping of columns. If you see here, C1, C2, C3. So they have done the grouping here. Okay. So next again, we'll go back to 
marking okay now let's let's discuss discuss about the manual marking so whenever you are doing the manual marking you need to check whether the site has any existing buildings if any existing buildings is that we will be taking it as a reference point for the marking activity if road is that that also will be taken as marking activity if the layout if the layout is there and you don't have uh, any adjacent buildings then you have to check for the marking pillars or in local languages it is called as kucha color means the boundary pillars okay so those boundary pillars normally will be in yellow yellow color stone okay so that you have to check with this so the it will be like this okay so in this class i'll, I'll consider we have an empty land or there are buildings adjacent to it like rear side and left side so we have building at this junction and this junction so let's see how we will be doing marking in this criteria okay okay so let's start with that so let's consider this is my okay so let's consider we have a 30 40 site here okay then we have building adjacent to it so left side we have a building and right side also we have a building sorry rear side okay so this now what we need to do is we need to mark the boundary first so when you are marking the boundary you need to consider that first what you need to do is you need to set up a baseline so baseline has to be set in such a way that it should be along longer direction because when you are setting the baseline along the longer direction what happens is so the area covered when there is a difference in the dimension the area covered by the longer direction will be greater than the area covered in the smaller direction okay so that's why the baseline has to be set in set with the longer direction so now i am we will be go, going to do the setup of the baseline okay how we are going to set the baseline so if you will be having a building here or either you'll be having the compound here so when the building or compound is that what you need to do is from here you have to mark one feet okay then from here you have to mark one feet so now one feet and one feet is marked so what you need to do is you need to join the these two points so how we are going to join these two points so by drawing the line so now by drawing the line i will be joining this then again with the same thing what you need to do you need to mark one feet here with respect to this and one feet here again what you need to do you need to join these two points so how we are going to join this point like this now you have joined the points okay so you have an intersection point here cut it so this is your intersection point so when your intersection point is there what you need to do is next thing you need to check the right angle okay so right angle has to be so right angle so when you when you want to check the right angle so what you need to do is you need to use a method called 3 4 5 method okay so this 3 4 5 method is derived by the pythagoras theorem okay so that is means adjacent opposite and hypotenuse so hypotenuse is equal to adjacent hypotenuse is equal to square root of adjacent square plus opposite square okay so that is nothing but ac is equal to square root of ab square plus bc square okay that is the pythagoras theorem so by using that you have to do check the right angle okay so when you're checking the right angle now we have this is the center point so from here what you need to do you need to mark three feet okay and from again at the from the intersection point you have to check mark four feet so now this is four feet and this is some now what you need to do you need to check the hypotenuse so when you're checking the hypotenuse this should be equal to five feet okay if this is not equal to five feet what you need to do 
you need to adjust with the smaller line that is grid line so this is your baseline this has become the baseline okay and this is your grid line which is perpendicular to your baseline so you have to adjust with this line because as I already i have told you that the area covered by the longer direction when there is a change in the dimension is greater than the smaller direction that's why we have to consider the longer side because the area of encroachment or the area of reduction will be avoided in this condition now after getting the right angle so now i have got the right angle so in the previous drawing we have discussed right so we have discussed about the grid lines so now what i need to do is i need to mark grid line 1 1 so first whenever we will be marking so the grid line 1 1 has to be marked so if you check here so this is your boundary line okay and this is your first grid line so the distance between these two will be given here can you see here that is given as two feet one inch okay so now what i need to do is i need to mark two feet one inch but already i know that from here to here it is one feet so two feet ten inch minus one feet will be your one feet ten inch so from this point you need to mark one feet ten inch so take the tape here Keep your tape here from here mark 1 feet 10 inch here mark 1 feet 10 inch now join okay so now you got grid line 1 1 okay so before that what you need to do is you need to set up the boundary so how we are going to set up the boundary so already we have already we have checked the right angle so now everything is in right angle so from this point this is your 30 feet area and this is your 40 feet area okay so now i need to mark along the 40 feet so 40 means sorry this is 30 feet so already one feet is marked so 30 minus 1 is 29 so from here mark 29 so from here mark 29 so that will be equal to 30 right so now what you need to do is you need to join these two point got it next from here the 40 so already one feet is marked so 40 minus 1 is 39 so from this point you mark 39 and you mark 39 and join these two so now this will be your boundary got it so now the boundary is marked so if you you already the 90 degree is checked here no so everywhere it will be 90 degree because it's a rule of rectangle or triangle uh, sorry square so rectangle as in a rectangle or a square all the angles will be equal to 90 degree got it so that is how you will be marking the boundary so as per the previous discussions we have marked the boundary once the boundary is marked what we have to do is we need to set up the grid lines so first grid line is 2 feet 10 inches from here so i'll So now we have marked the boundary. So as per the drawing, okay, as per the drawing, what is there? Okay, so let's consider the footing F1 is 4 feet by 5 feet. Okay, so that's I'm imagining, okay, 4 feet by 5 feet. So how are you going to mark? This is a point of intersection. So from this point, so 2 feet this side and 2 feet this side. And 5 feet is from this point. 200 feet this side and 200 feet this side so what you need to do is just you need to join these lines so now footing f1 is marked okay same way if your footing is here you have to mark like this okay then if the footing is here you have to mark like this so now when you're reading the drawing how you are going to locate these footings so let's consider this is f1 okay so the location of f1 is at a1 means the point of intersection is A1 means it is the footing is intersecting at A grid line A and 1 okay so if if you see this one then it is at B3 correct if you see this footing it is at C2 so this is how you will be locating the footings okay so I will be discussing the uh, the marking process in uh, like uh, columns and uh, footings and also i'll be uh, discussing about uh, marking of your plinth beams in the coming section 
कमिंग सेशन